up there at Portland, Indiana this year at that biggest, world's biggest gas engine show, they say. And uh, I scored this uh, plastic. I'll show it to you. I got this up there. <clears throat> I got this at. Uh, It's a, this is what I got. Um, you know, picked it up at the booth. And uh, this this is the way I got it. I got the tank. And, uh, and I got an install kit. It's a, uh, I'll show it to you. That's, that's what I got. And that's, uh, well, <laughs> anyways, uh, it's two of these things and four washers and four bolts. And, and I also have two, a couple bolts up here in the front that, you know, same thing. But they were on the tank. Uh, th this, this was on the display table there. Uh, for purchase and uh, I think it's a new item it's a plastic gas tank for a uh, McCormick Deering Type M <clears throat> and uh, uh, that tank would replace uh, well uh, This right here, that's a that's a three horsepower tank, but this is what the factory one looked like. So bearing in mind that they were proportioned to the size of the engine as to the size of the gas tank. But we'll see. This is, this is what, this is the setup that this tank goes with. Now that's it. So it, it should fit into this tank up uh, to be, uh, uh, it actually got tight <clears throat> right in the position it's supposed to. So, and this, this being the vent, this is three horsepower, but it would have a, this would be the vent system. And, um, and the eighth inch w would be the suction side, proportioned to the vent inside here, the way it's soldered up. But uh, to, like, look at it, th this is uh goes in the front it does have uh, the construction is uh, uh, they did a little you know second second operation there with a grinder to clean up that flash uh, a good job I, I think uh, they, they, they've, they've uh, it's a little porous right there I can see some dryness but but anyways I think it's good. It has brass embedded in it, front and rear. The fittings are quarter twenty. And uh, and the other the other the other uh, uh, concern is the lime of everything. And this is your drain over here. So you know that's a complete setup. I e this uh and i have to uh well i have to put i'll have to put it up in there and see which way these goes but let's assume well actually see i have another gas tank right here so
glue. Well, I'm not sure, but I'm assuming uh, it may it may go like this. If so, then I think I think with the uh, uh, supplied uh, uh, equipment, I think you use a washer and a. Uh, yeah, you know I'll probably add a lock washer onto this. Uh, but. So, and that's the way that works. Uh, you may supposed to be able to, you may supposed to turn it over. I'm not sure uh, uh, until I get this one to the engine to know about that. Uh, the the holes, the holes in this bracket is quite large. I assume for the purpose of adjustment, I, I would think, uh, to, to be able to center up to align your pipe system, because sometimes it would be a, it, it would be an inconvenience at the, at the least to line up some of the old replacement tanks. That, they were square and, and but anyway, that's the way that looks. So, I'm just saying, uh, I think this is one of, I think it's, this is very early, <laughs> you know what I mean, uh, one of their first ones, like, I kind of like it, it's, it's okay, uh, so far, uh, I like the concept, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to submit that in there for y'all, uh, what it is. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put this on, I have an engine in Q, if you would remember, I have reference to it in the past, uh, my friend Tony Bacon, uh, he, he passed away some, uh, uh, some years ago, a, few, a couple, and I was fortunate that Mike, uh, Mike not give me a engine that, uh, Tony had owned. And I was going to rebuild it, just, you know, call it Tony's engine, you know. And um, uh, it was in bad condition. So I'm going to put this gas tank on it. I think, well, I'm going to use this on Tony's engine. Let's just, uh, we'll earmark that for that if it's, uh, so it's high voltage here. Be aware of that. It'll surely take you to your knees if you get a shock. But to get right into it here, I leave you with a question as to, well, first, these relays are that I'm using in this coil pack, a buzz coil with the battery. And I, uh, the need came about that I wanted to run this bourbon engine. So I'm going to far uh, use those points with this coil pack, little coil box. And I'm going to show you here the spark that we expect to get inside the cylinder on this little engine. But th this is, I, I was, if, if, I, if I can tell you something, uh, and, and whoever drawed this up right here gets all the credit for this thing. I, I just assemble it per the diagram. But uh, to the extent that, yeah, I built a lot of these in the early days. And I remember when I first got this schematic, it was at an engine show at Houston, Mississippi. That engine show they have down there every year. And I was uh, walking across the 
grounds there. And uh, uh, someone, a uh, friend, somebody I know hollered at me and said, hey, uh, this is for you. And, and it was a scribbled piece of paper, no bigger than this. Uh, I have wore it out by now. And, uh, but it was a pencil drawing of this. And I built one immediately and have built a lot of them since and have had good success with them. Up to the point that uh, there's a question that I don't know the answer to. And I submit it to whoever's watching this video to if they know for real uh, how to do it. So, and I'll show you. Let's get out. <clears throat> this is when I went through the box over to build this. I'm going to build four of them. And and I was looking for a five-pin resistor, five-pin relay. And it's just a common thing. They're really cheap on the on the on the internet there. Of all they're all the same, but they're packaged different different brands. But this one has a little light in it right there. And you clear you can see in there. But they they all do the same thing. They have five pins. <clears throat> so with that side. If you, if this article was in, well, it was on the internet, and, uh, and, and, and I've had it for a long time, and uh, have went by it, to the point that down at the bottom here, I'm going to read it to you, take note of this, uh, and it says down here, if you like, you can add a 0 0.5 to a 1 microfad capacitor in series with a 500 to a 1,000 ohm resistor across the breaking points of the relay, i.e. 30 and 87A, and they will last much longer. Okay, <clears throat> now I done did that, but I don't know if I done it right. And, and 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 the route that I took, uh, this being a, a war loom that I assembled, and, and it's this one. This is what we're going to see a spark right here in a minute. And this is it in real life in person. This right here will be on that board over there. And uh, But you can see that I added this, uh, and, and I think in this case, I could use a larger capacitor but I did option for a 1000 a 1000 ohm uh, a resistor and, and, and I got them wired up and, and and the way I have them I have them and, and this is what I ended up with you know one resistor on one leg and one leg over here you know okay and then uh, I, I proceeded to install this onto this wiring loom by putting it <clears throat> well <clears throat> I have to look at my schematic now uh just always remember that there ain't no 87 and the center one is 87 a so, and then it's schematic, uh, both of those are wired together. Uh, 87A and 30 is right there. Okay, on, on my, what I'm holding here in hand is this doubled up here is that one. And, and that's number 30 over there. And, and then, and I proceeded to put this in here like this right here with the resistor on the 87 and 30 leg of that relay. So, and, and, and the other side going directly to the number 30 pin. Okay, my question is, do I have that backwards? Should it, should it go over like this right here? You know, should the resistor be on the 30 pin 
you know, uh, leave a comment. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I'll show you something now. Well, this simple circuit right here, it's the same thing. And I built this many years ago. Uh, you know, 10, more than 10 years ago, I would say. And, um, uh, and you can see on it, I had installed that resistor, and, uh, you can see how many ohms, that's, uh, that's 47, that's point forty seven right there, but I have it wired up to the, uh, to the same schematic as I used in this one, so, and, and it's, this one, this one has a very nice spark, and, and, and it has a lot of, I've actually run an engine with this with this right here. You just hook a battery to it and a spark plug wire, and uh, and this little relay does everything else. I leave a comment there. I'm here in Middle Tennessee. You know who it is. Let's look at them sparks now. Well, okay, I'll show you something. If you take a screenshot. That right there, that's a that's a board wired up for a single spark six volt with a point system. And, and this would be your spark plug here, and I just got it set up as a spark gap. And, and it's quite a lengthy spark you get from this. With this wiring diagram, these two these two wires right here would go to your points, your contacts, um, ever how you're going to trigger the system. And this other wire would go to the ground, you know, on the engine. That way when you screw your spark plug in there, it, it'll make a ground back to the engine. So, when you do that, Um, this is what you get every time that when you turn the, the, the timing gear every time it come around would be this would be your points let's say quite a robust spark Hold them together. That's called the weld. How, how long those, how, how long that's, how long that's made contact is the, the weld of the system. Uh, the longer that contact is, the uh, faster your battery run use up. But it's important that, that the weld be, 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 be right. Just saying. Oh yeah, stand there in the dark. Just saying.